Pleasant day, fellow learners. This is your mentor, eh? your fact check buddy, once again, joining you for another teaching and learning session for your test preparations for the NCLEX RN. Okay, so before we get to start on today's topic, which is related to bee sting and anaphylactic shock, first and foremost, let me be the bearer of good news to everyone. I'd like to invite you on May 28, 2022, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time via Zoom, I'm doing an NCLEX RN quick fix session that's going to be at least an hour, plus I'm giving away 100 copies of my latest book, NCLEX RN Quick Fix in Pharmacology. That's going to be on the 28th of May. So to reserve your slot, kindly email info at regafosreview.com or text or call our hotline 0906-201-9383. See you there. Okay, on to our discussions. But before that, once again, I'd like to ask you to join me in this mission. Our goal is to provide free NCLEX RN application and review to 100 nurses. And to help us achieve this, just watch and finish the ads in our videos. You don't have to do anything special. Just please don't skip the videos because whatever this channel earns goes to the scholarship funds of nurses. We did it for 100 nurses last year. We want to do it to more nurses this year. So let's have an inspiration from the mail. And actually, this is not from the mail, but somebody placed a comment on um, one of our videos that's on thyroidectomy and hypocalcemia. So this is a nurse who passed the NCLEX RN by just watching our videos on our YouTube channel. In fact, a lot of nurses in the world are achieving their great American dream to pass the NCLEX RN by just watching our videos. So I'd like to invite you to watch some more, okay? So um, this came from those called celebs, okay? Thank you. Bless your sir. Hope, you give, hope to give you a good news by end of the week. And... After two days, he says, hi, sir, I came back to show my gratitude. What a way. Thank you for saying thank you. You know, your feedback inspires us to do our best. We're not asking anything, but for you not to skip the videos. And please, when you become successful, tell us your story. If we were able to help you out, if we were able to inspire you, please tell us your story. We'll be glad to know about it. May God bless you more and your household for all the text taking tips and strategies. My test ended at 75 in two hours. Congratulations. That's the minimum number of items now. I tried the trick and got a good pop up. Thank you once again. May all your dreams come true. We're just here to facilitate and to help you out pass your NCLEX. So on to our topic about bee sting and anaphylactic shock. So let's try to figure out what is the relationship of these two. Okay, here we go. Let's begin with a functional concept. When you say anaphylactic shock, it is developing when you experience allergic reaction on the skin or the mucosa, and then you experience difficulty of breathing because of narrowed airways, then that's followed by a sudden drop in blood pressure, and that drop in blood pressure could harm the other organs, specifically the kidneys. So there could be organ dysfunction. When all of these are occurring, you are therefore developing anaphylactic shock. If anaphylactic shock is occurring due to insect sting, use a plastic card to remove this stinger. So you just flip it upwards, okay? You can use your credit card or ID cards, okay? Flip it upwards, okay? And never squeeze the stinger. If you're going to squeeze it using tweezers that can release more venom. Remember, we only use the tweezers when we want to remove ticks. Like for example, when you go to the forest, when you go to the woods and you get exposed to deer ticks that could potentially lead to Lyme disease. And that's a time your tweezers could help you pull the tick out. Okay, so pull it with an upward um, method coming from your skin. But for bee sting, no, you don't use your tweezer. You have to flick the stinger 
using upward pressure with a card, plastic card, an ID card, or a credit card. Now, what are the common triggers of anaphylactic shock? Now, we have drugs like penicillin or antibiotics are very, very notorious for causing allergic reactions. Insect sting, like sting coming from a bee or a wasp. Foods like milk, eggs, seafood, and nuts. Usually, that's the reason why egg whites are not given to children until they are 12 months of age because it contains albumin, which could potentially trigger reactions. So therefore, when we're supposed to be giving, giving iron-rich foods, to babies between the age of four to six months, we are supposed to start with the egg yolk first. And the egg white is given until, it's not given not until the child is 12 months of age. Now, latex could also potentially trigger anaphylactic shock. And those who are allergic to latex are usually also allergic to some fruits like apple, avocado, banana, chestnut, kiwi, papaya, plum, fresh pineapples, and strawberries. Now note, your dragon fruit may cause other allergic reactions, but not necessarily related to latex. And it's very rare that there are patients who could be um, complaining about allergic reaction to the fruit. So it's, it's a rare case. Therefore, always remember that. So patients with asthma are at increased risk for anaphylactic shock because of their elevated immunoglobulin E. So anaphylactic shock can worsen the condition of patients with multiple sclerosis because in anaphylactic shock, you'll have difficulty of breathing. And in multiple sclerosis, remember the demyelination of the neurons okay, could weaken the muscles for breathing and that can be worsened by the difficulty of breathing that occurs in a patient with anaphylactic shock, okay? So anaphylactic shock is manifested by skin reactions. There could be feeling of warmth and then there's gonna be resulting pallor or flushing and then tingling of the scalp. I usually have that whenever um, my, my skin asthma is triggered. Then respiratory symptoms could begin with runny nose, frequent sneezing, wheezing and then shortness of breath. And then that progresses to difficulty of breathing. Then gastrointestinal symptoms like nausea, abdominal pain, vomiting, and diarrhea. Cardiovascular symptoms like weak and rapid pulse. And then eventually central nervous system symptoms like confusion, dizziness, and decreased level of consciousness. Now, the first step in the treatment of anaphylactic shock involves immediate injection of epinephrine intramuscular at the anterolateral thigh. Now, the dose is usually 0.3 milligrams for children and 0.5 milligrams for adults. Anaphylactic shock, if not properly treated, can lead to either arrhythmias that could progress to heart attack, brain damage, cardiogenic shock, and death. So have the code A, B, C, D. Now, management of anaphylactic shock includes epinephrine, glucocorticoids, albuterol, and oxygen. All of these initial interventions are aimed at improving the patient's breathing. Definitely, your epinephrine could uh, promote bronchodilatation, glucocorticoids could decrease inflammation, your albuterol could facilitate ease of breathing, or that facilitate breathing and makes breathing easier for the patient. And of course, your oxygen is necessary to ensure that your patient would have adequate supply for the tissues to function normally. So with those knowledge now that we just came from our review of some important functional concepts, let's try answering a simple question. Which of the following fruits are common causes of allergy that can potentially lead to anaphylactic shock. So we're talking about latex allergy, okay? So strawberries, yes, we said that. Bananas, yes. Kiwi fruit, yes. Dragon fruit, we said, no, this is not a common cause of allergy that could lead to anaphylactic shock. Canned pineapple, you have the word canned. Fresh pineapples, could also trigger latex allergy, but canned pineapples are usually safe, including your dried fruits like raisins. So we put an X. So there you go. We've identified the correct answers. So let's learn together. 
If you have other topics in mind which you may want me to cover in my future videos, send in your request to my email, mentor.raygapos at gmail.com. Okay, so this is your mentor day, your fact check buddy saying a functional concept a day keeps your NCLEX RN fears away. So if you love this video, please don't forget to subscribe, share, and hit the like and bell notification button. And don't forget to tell your friends how good it is if it served you well. We'd love to know your story.